So today I'd like to bring kind of a fun topic uh, to uh, the, uh, the table on reverse engineering. Uh, this fun topic, uh, we're going to cover it, cover how to, to leverage AI on reverse engineering with Capella. So to do that, I'm going to basically walk through a couple slides here, and then we'll get on and show kind of a demo of it. Um, so basically what we're going to do is we're going to, I'm going to demonstrate how we can do that. And we're going to be using a Python for Capella and we're going to be using open API, uh, open AI's API to basically populate some models descriptions. And then I'll show you how to basically build this yourselves and how you can do go through that process of building it yourself, uh, and the different steps that are involved. And then we'll show it and we'll do a little more detailed test and of, uh, how it kind of works. So, uh, quickly though, just to kind of give a quick demo of it, uh, I think it's fun to see, uh, uh, what we're going to be doing is basically building a script uh, capability uh, that will actually go out and use the OpenAI uh, uh, API, uh, you know, popular with now ChatGTP. It's uh, you know it's the same company that brought us that, and I can use that API to essentially select an object in my my model that I've been reverse engineering here with you, and we can just invoke a script. And when I invoke that script. It basically runs a little script in the console window window here, uh, and that script basically is going out to the engine, uh, and that engine uh, will then generate take the prompt that's basically been put to, put to it, and use that prompt to uh, populate the description field of the module, just as you're kind of seeing right here. So that's pretty much how, what it did, and it, I basically say, okay, this is what an ultrasonic sensor is. Now, of course, you can go modify this description field, but this is just a nice way to boost the quality of your models. Uh, I've actually got the prompt to basically give me references of where it got the information from, uh, and then I also say up here what model I'm using uh, from the, the OpenAI to do the, uh, the tool. And so we'll walk through kind of how you build this, and then uh, and we'll show a little bit, we'll go back here and you know, give a little more detail on it. Okay, uh, so let me just finish this. We'll go back to the slides. Okay, so uh, first of all, you, you need to, uh, th these are some of the things around how you build it. Uh, the first thing you gotta do is you gotta install uh, Python for Capella. Uh, there's some great webinars on Python Capella out there. Uh, you know, I would just go and look it up. Uh, you can find Python for Capella uh, in the, the Labs for Capella uh, GitHub site. Uh, there's a great set of instructions that go through how to install it. Uh, just uh, take your time, go through the install. Um, it basically, uh, I did this for this activity uh, right from a brand new, the brand new version of Python for Capella, which was 1.2 at this time, and uh, and it worked just fine. Uh, I'm using uh, Python 3.10 uh, and installed that on my system uh, in just basically a common directory. Uh, the next thing you got to do is you got to get an account with uh, OpenAPI. Now I'm not. Uh, and, and not part of the AI, uh, open AI in any form. Uh, I'm not connected with the open AI organization. I'm just using this as kind of an example uh, for it. Um, you know, to do that though, you do have to uh, get access to the API, which may be uh, at this point in time, there's a three month uh, credit that you can get uh, when you sign up for it, you'll have access to it, but eventually you have to start paying for it uh, after the three month period uh, is up. Uh, there are instructions about using the Python API and how to use it. It's pretty straight, pretty uh, easy to use. You have to basically install uh, the module and cover that a little bit more. You also need to set up some type of environmental variable uh, to basically reference it. Uh, this is one that I have that I set up for it that allows me to put in my uh, API key, which you'll get when you uh, set up uh, Open API and you get access to the module. You'll have to add the open AI module uh, to the Python interpreter. This is part of the Capella, Python for Capella setup, uh, where you actually are referencing what Python version you're using, and then using uh, a pip interface that's on here, you can actually load the open AI module to get it up and going. So it's a pretty straightforward load process. This is basically the script. Uh, it's a very simple script. Uh, part of uh, open uh, for, for uh, Python for Capella is you can actually extend the user menus. So that's where I get the uh, command open AI populate from selected object that comes from this first line here. Uh, this is the code that basically allows me to select uh, an object or multiple objects and, and basically have it populate uh, the script. So this is what the code that's basically being run. It's less than 100 lines. Uh, the meat of the code is, that calls the AI engine is right here uh, on the script. Uh, it basically uh, is the one that's actually feeding it the prompt and picking the model and, and running the code. Uh, 
once that's done, uh, you basically just uh, select the object and it will work for any object and they'll do a description. Now, this is a very simple implementation. It's not looking for the object type and telling the prompt differently. Those are great enhancements. Right now, I'm just taking the description, uh, taking the name of the object and throwing it into the prompt. Uh, and that's what's generating uh, the code. And you can kind of see that in the code here. You know, write a description for a camera module, site references, and format in HTML. That's basically all I'm getting back from um, having the prompt do it. This is the results of that. You can actually see the results right here. Uh, and then that then is uh, dumped into uh, a description field using the, the API uh, for uh, Capella, uh, for Python for Capella. So that's the actual end results that we get from it. So uh, that's pretty much all you have to do to kind of get it working. Uh, I'll go back and do another little demo. So in this case, I'm going to select a couple objects. I'm going to just select a IO board, a controller board, and servo. I'm going to basically go down here and say open AI, uh, populate the object descriptions. It does take a little while to run, and that's really due to the the model that I'm using, I didn't subscribe to the most fastest <laughs> uh, API interface. Uh, I paid my subscription for a lower level. Uh, it's really cool when you do subscribe uh, at this time, and everything changes on this world right now because it's moving around quite a bit. Um, it does uh, you limit my cost, so I don't have to worry about it. But the cost at this point, I didn't even come close to uh, the $5 credit when I was developing this uh, that was given uh, free. So. Uh, yeah, it, it definitely will be modifying uh, and changing over time. Um, as you can see, it's taking a, a couple seconds here for it to run, and we'll uh, wait for uh, the results. And this is actually going to do three objects all at once. And uh, when that's done, you'll see that it has done all the population. We can get, now go in and take a look at them. You see here that the description for the servo has been uh, populated. And we have the I.O. board has been populated with a description also. So it gives you an idea of what the general I.O. board might be. And then finally, the controller board. Uh, so just descriptions of it. So this is a very helpful way to kind of get a little bit more richness to your model uh, with the description fields that are populated in it. Uh, that'll they'll generate out when you use uh, uh, exporting to HTML. And if you start using some document generation, uh, it'll be very helpful to have that information there. And of course, you always can modify it. You notice that I did do annotate it with the fact that it, what it was generated by uh, to meet any qualifications for it. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed uh, this little presentation. Um, if you did, um, that we covered all this material, please subscribe. Uh, I will uh, have a PDF, PDF version of this posted uh, along with uh, the, the script that was used. So thank you very much for joining and hope you have a, uh, a great day.